What's up, everybody? Back with another study here in the book of Proverbs. Today on July 6th, we're going through Proverbs 6. And before before we start, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptations just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life through him. Our sin is taken away and we receive his righteousness, his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later. And first I'll say the word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. Turn away from your wickedness and turn to God. We don't deserve His mercy. We can't earn a right standing with Him. We're, we're all sinful. And it's only by His grace, by His free gift of salvation that we don't deserve that we can be saved. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins in order to pay the penalty for your sins and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe he died and rose three days later and is offering you eternal life through his sacrifice and you call on him to forgive you and you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit gives you power, wisdom, and discernment. He will he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Now let's get into Proverbs 6. Hallelujah. My son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger, in other words, if you put up collateral, and a lot of the time, collateral was put up for, um, people who put themselves up as collateral, and, and um, if they didn't pay, pay back that person, then they would be their slave. They would be uh, enslaved to them. My son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger, if you have been snared with your words, with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this, my son, and deliver yourself. Since you have come into the hand of your neighbor, through offering collateral, whether that's uh, themselves or their belongings, their home, whatever it is, and aren't able to pay it back. Since you have come into the hand of your neighbor, go, humble yourself, and importune your neighbor. And importune there means, I actually didn't look it up in the Hebrew, but it means beg or entreat, beseech, implore, supplicate, to ask urgently. Go, humble yourself and importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hunter's hand and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. 
and not only in the things of this life but we need to be the same way toward God completely humble ourselves and importune him for the forgiveness of our sins and fear him and beg for his mercy because even after coming to faith none of us are perfect we, we all sin here or there here and there none of us are absolutely perfect we do our best at least we should be doing our best and we need to be the same way toward God I'm going to just read this one more time do this, my son, and deliver yourself. Since you have come into the hand of your neighbor, go, humble yourself, and importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hunter's hand, and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Observe her ways, and be wise. Which, having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. So, this is one of the many times in Scripture summer is uh, mentioned as harvest. Harvest time. And uh, the harvest is representing the rapture, ultimately. But there's different harvests. There's the grape harvest. There's the wheat harvest. Which I believe they both happen at the same time. Go to the ant, O sluggard. And we, in the same way, we need to, not only in the things of this life, not be lazy. We need to um, not waste time. But especially with the things of God, we need to... Be wise. We need to not be lazy, not um, not waste time. We need to be about our Father's business. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Observe her ways and be wise. Which having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. It said, observe her ways and be wise. Preparing our food and gathering provision in the harvest. And we also see in, see in another scripture that he who... Uh, something about working during... sowing during harvest. Working during the harvest time. And, and being wise. I, I can't remember the exact scripture that I'm thinking about. But... But we need to be about our Father's business. We need to be preaching the gospel. We need to be allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us to do all of God's will. Right now and all times. How long, will, how long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? And at the same time, as far as the sleep, if we go to Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins, it says, while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. Uh, basically, not not awake to the times we're living in, not awake to, the, to what's truly going on. And, and we need to truly seek God. Make sure we have, make sure we're filled with His Spirit. Make sure we have oil in our lamps. And try to seek to be awake and ready. How long will you lie down, O slugger? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So, so it's mentioned, it's, it's basically saying work during summer 
during harvest time and don't sleep and uh you know i do believe when when the tribulation begins it will be right before or right at the beginning of summer potentially even sometime during summer but so whether that's i mean it's still possibly this year i don't know none of us know the day or hour um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I almost lean toward it being like another year, but it's still very well maybe this year. How long will you lie down, O oh sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And that, um, as far as the sleep, it said when the bridegroom was was delaying they all got drowsy and began to sleep the delay we're in the delay right now and whether the delay just started when the final seven years began the final seven years began on june 20th the final seven years of this generation seven biblical years before uh may 14th 2028 which would be the end of the 80 years from israel being created as a nation again but the delay either just began or already began uh, a couple months ago or even a couple years ago potentially but we're in the delay I believe I truly believe we're in the delay that the Bible speaks about it's only a matter of time. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. And this goes back to, I mean, not, not only pertaining to, think, to this life and, and if we're lazy and wasting time or... Um, we're not going to have have money. We're not going to be making money. But also, um, if we're sleeping spiritually and not ready, not right with God, if we fall into sin, we can allow those demons back in. And this goes back to what we talked about in the last Proverbs study. What we talked about in uh, it was either the last, I think the last uh, Mark study. See, we we are the strong man of the house, which is us, the or, or our body, and we can allow the demons back in by going back into sin, giving them uh, opportunity, and that's who robs the house. And here it says. Uh, your poverty will come like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. A worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil. Who spreads strife. Therefore his calamity will come suddenly. Instantly he will be broken and there will be no healing. So let us not be anything close to this. Let us be ready. Let us be about our father's business. And most importantly obedient to him. A worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Therefore his calamity will come suddenly, 
instantly he will be broken and there will be no healing. There are six things which Yahuwah hates, which the Lord hates. Yes, seven, which are an abomination to him. So there's six. And the final seven, and the, the, then a final seventh that are, that's uh, mentioned here in Proverbs. Seven, the seventh being the worst one, it seems. Unless it means all seven about an abomination to him. There are six things which Yahuwah hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes. Haughty eyes. Arrogant. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that run rapidly to evil. A false witness who utters lies. And then the last one, the seventh. And one who spreads strife among brothers. That's the last and the seventh. It says seven are an abomination to him. And whether that means the seventh or all seven. That's the last one. One who spreads strife among brothers. So one more time. Things that God hates. Uh, haughty eyes. We, we have to be humble. We have to be completely humble. Um, God hates arrogance. Because who are we to be prideful about anything? Who are we to be... To think we're anything. Or to think... To be arrogant about anything. Because it's God who allows our every breath. He can take it all away in a second. He allows our every meal. He allow, He's the one who allows us to have the blessings that we have. Who are, who are we to think we're... And he, He's the one that allows us to have, have the understanding that we have. Who are, who are we to think that we have anything or know anything? There are six things which Yahuwah hates. There's seven, yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. God hates pride. The Bible says all liars will take place and have their place in a lake of fire. And hands that shed innocent blood. Murder. A heart that devises wicked plans. Out of the heart is... Um, I think we went through this in the last Mark study, out of the or the, the one I'm going to put out today. Out of the heart is uh, comes what defiles us. Is out of the out of the heart come all these things, and and what comes out of our heart is what's going to be put be uh, what's going to play out in our actions. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that run rapidly to evil. Quick, quick to turn to evil. Quick to do evil. A false witness who utters lies. And that's uh, kind of the same thing as a liar, except you're, a false witness is um, is more than just lying. It's, it's lying about somebody um, in a way that could cause them to be even put to death. A false witness who utters lies and one who spreads strife among brothers. Let us not be a part of any of this. My son, observe the commandment of your father and do not forsake the teaching or law, Torah of your mother. And not only the earthly we should obey our father and mother the fifth commandment but uh, our heavenly father and the Bible says our mother above is the new Jerusalem um, and the commandments of his kingdom which is the commandments that were given in the Old Testament and it will be carried out in the millennial reign 
Son, observe the commandment of your father, and do not forsake the teaching or law of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. And we, we saw this in a previous chapter. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. And if it's mentioned more than once, it's, it means it's important. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. We need to... Make sure his word is in our heart. Make sure it's in our heart. Make sure we have a circumcised heart. Meaning we... Uh, obey God. We, we want to obey God. And... Out of the, out of our heart, out of the love in our out of the love for Him in our heart, and uh, and we need the Holy Spirit because what comes out of the heart is, like I said, is what's going to be played out in in your actions. Bind them continually, continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk about. They will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you. If we have His commandments in our heart, when we wake, they're going to talk to us when we sleep. He's going to protect us because he, because our heart's right with Him. When, when you walk about, they will guide you. He will guide our steps through His Word. Hallelujah. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching is light. Our law is light. For the commandment for the commandment is a lamp and the law, the Torah is light. And you know, a lot of people get mixed up um, because the Jews also call what's written in the Talmud the Torah. And But Torah, Torah means instructions. And when I say Torah, I mean the God's instructions, which are written in the first five books of the Bible. And His commandments, His His law, His His Torah is light, because it's the. And this goes back to the parable of the ten virgins. We are the lamps. Although in this it says the commandment is a lamp. In this. Um, in Matthew 25, we are the lamps. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the oil, which produces the light, which is obedience to Him. Obedience to His commandments. The law is light. When we're uh, carrying it out. When we're being obedient. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproofs for discipline are the way of life. And some of the other translations. Uh, the NLV says correction and instruction are the way of life. NLT says their corrective discipline is the way to life. Reproofs of instruction. Um, rebukes for discipline are the way of life. Corrective discipline is the way of life. Just reading through some of the translations. Reproofs for discipline are the way of life. To keep you from the evil woman. And this is the, the adulteress that we spoke about, uh, I believe in the last chapter, or if it was in the last chapter, it was the chapter before. The adulteress, the, the false prophets, who... The false, uh, the harlot, being an adulteress, being an adulteress against God, a harlot against God, and this is what the Israelites did. Um, 
a lot throughout time. God called continually, continually called them a harlot against him and being a, an adult, adulteress against him because they were living in sin. And these false prophets are causing people to live in sin, causing people to, to themselves be an adulteress against God. To keep you, for the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is light. The law is light. And reproofs for discipline are the way of life. To keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. See, see these false teachers like to tickle ears. They, they have a, a feel-good message. It, it, it looks good. It seems good. Uh, but if you truly know the word, you recognize the, the, the false doctrines and you recognize uh, the error. It's, it's like, the, like the prosperity gospel. It sound, sounds good to people. They believe in Jesus and he'll bless you and God wants this and that for you and that God does want to bless us, but it's false doctrines. To keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread. And an, and an adulteress, and this also goes back to our house being, being robbed. We saw in the last chapter, um, on account of the harlot, um, you, uh, I mean, this goes back to the demons allowing, going back to sin and allowing the demons to come back in and rob your house. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread. And an adulteress hunts for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is the one who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever, whoever touches her will not go unpunished. And it's not only uh, actual adultery, but in, in the deeper meaning of things, you know, it's, it's speaking about uh, going along with the harlot, going along with the adulteress, and walking in... And her ways, which are not the ways of God, is walking in sin. Can a man take fire in his bosom? In other words, you're taking fire, you're walking on hot coals by messing with his adulteress, by living in sin. By being led astray by false doctrines and living in sin. Allowing demons back in. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? And the clothes that represents, <laughs> that represents our righteousness. This is the, the garments. We've been speaking about this in some of the studies over the last couple of days. The garments is our righteousness. The Bible says in Revelation 19, I believe, I believe verse 8, um, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And that's the, that's the wedding garment that... Uh, how, how we live, our, our, our righteousness, our, our life, our, our obedience to God. And if you um, go along with this harlot, these, this, uh, these false prophets, these false teachers and teachings, and go back into sin, that's why it says here with the clothes, clothes being burned. Can a man take fire in his bosom? And his clothes not be burned? The clothes, that's our, the person's righteousness, or the person's obedience. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread, and an adulteress hunts for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals, and his feet not be scorched? And uh,
that would be walking walking uh, in the wrong way. Your, your feet are going to be burned if you walk in the wrong direction, you know? So is one who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not go unpunished. In other words, following these false doctrines, following these false teachers, and and um, going back into sin. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But when he is found, he must repay sevenfold. He must give all the substance of his house. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would, he who would destroy himself does it. One more time. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself if he's hungry. But when he's found, he must repay sevenfold. He must give all the substances of his house. But the one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. Uh, sorry about that interruption. I just got a random uh, spam, uh, not even spam call. I, I answered it and someone just stayed silent on the other end of the line for a couple seconds and then hung up. Uh, most likely the enemy trying to interrupt this study and that's not the first time that's happened. But uh, still here in Proverbs 6, hopefully, and hopefully I can splice together the video sometimes. When this happens, the video gets interrupted, and I can't. I can splice the to splice the video together, but it won't upload. So we were right here at the end of the video too. Um, that's it's all good. It's all good. Just frustrating, you know, because now it's going to take me much longer to upload, probably, and I might not be able to upload. The one who commits adultery with a woman, as, it, as we were reading, uh, if one steals because he's hungry, men do not despise him if he steals because he's hungry, but, but when he's caught, he must repay give sevenfold and give all, all, of his, all of his household. But, but the one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. Again, this is speaking about the false following false doctrines, false teachers, going back into sin, and you destroy yourself by going back into sin, by following false ways, by not walking in the ways of God. I almost never get phone calls on this phone, and almost the only time it happens is when I'm doing a video. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. For jealousy enrages a man. So, in other words, if we go, if we go back into our sin. His wounds and disgrace he will find. His reproach will not be blotted out. For jealousy enrages a man. And this, this man here is speaking about God. For jealousy enrages a man. And he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept any ransom. Nor will he be satisfied though you give many gifts. One more time because this is very serious. If we go back into our old life, if we go back into sin, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. God is very merciful. God is very merciful. God is very patient. And a lot of us have backslidden in the past and bounced back. Um, and God is merciful. God is very forgiving, very merciful. But at the same time, if we go back 
into our old life and and stay there or even stay there for too long we are pushing it it says wounds and disgrace he will find and his reproach will not be blotted out his sin will not be blotted out for for jealousy enrages a man and he will not spare in the day of vengeance um which I believe it would be the tribulation time. The day of his wrath. He will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept any ransom, nor will he be nor will he be satisfied though you give many gifts. We can't play around with God. We gotta be right with him. We have to overcome and be right with him and be ready. And serve him with all our heart. That's the end of Proverbs 6. Let's not go back into our sin. Let's avoid that at all costs. Let's avoid things. Let's avoid sin altogether. But, you know, especially things that God hates. But, um, let's be right with Him. Let's overcome. I just praise Him that, uh, Uh, cuz I've screwed up so many times. I've screwed up so much over over the course of my walk. God is merciful. God is so merciful. And he could have left me. He could leave us at any time if he wanted to. But he's merciful. He stays true to his word. Jesus said I will never never leave you nor forsake you. But at the same time, he will stay true to his word in, in regards to judgment, in regards to all of his word. Let's not play around with God. Let's be right with him. Let's overcome. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him with all our heart. Let's let the Holy Spirit shine through us. Let's the Holy, let the Holy Spirit burn in us and, and produce the light, which is obedience to God. Let's shine his light. Let's show his love and do his will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. God is merciful. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Um, and we all need a savior. There's only one way to return to life. And because of all our sins, we can't earn it ourselves. We, we can't justify ourselves before God. Before God. And that's why Jesus came, lived a perfect life, and paid the penalty for us. So that through him, not by our own works, although we do need to be obedient to God, it's not by our own works, through him, we receive forgiveness of sins and are made right with God. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. That's the end of Proverbs 6. 6. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.